Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation and is special. Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted as always to be joined by Mr. Eddie Hearn. Eddie, last time I saw you was in Texas back in February. Really well, yeah, so it's 10 months down the line, man. It's good to see you again, mate. It's great to be here. I mean, I've, it was so strange flying out to America. I used to do it every other week. And I got on the plane and I was flying to Miami and they were like, oh, the flight today is 10 hours. Well, 10 hours? <laughs> and normally I was just, I was in such a robotic state that I would get on the plane and just sleep or work. And this time I sort of got on the plane and was like, oh, watch a movie and it's brilliant to be out here and it don't get any bigger than this. You know, someone said, I think Manic said to me yesterday, Eddie, you've done, in seven days, you've done Anthony Joshua, Triple G and Canelo Alvarez. I mean, does it does it get any bigger than that? It doesn't, because I love being around greatness. I love being around great fighters, great people, and I love being involved in events and fights where something very special is on the line. Legacy is on the line, and this is going to be wild. This is going to be a great fight. I can't wait. Well, I agree with that. I can't wait either. Talk to me about the fight then, Cam Smith and Canelo. You said in the press conference here, biggest fight of the year. I mean, we had to, we did have Wilder Fury at the beginning of the year. Why, in your own mind, is this the biggest fight of the year? Because of the situation we're in. You know, all of a sudden, fights like... I mean, this is a great, great fight. This is the 168-pound number one in the division against the pound-for-pound pound number one in the sport. So, automatically, it's a monstrous fight. But to deliver it now, where we're just not seeing the major fights coming out. You know, Canelo Alvarez, you have to give a huge shout-out to him and Eddie Reynoso and to Joe and to Callum. And, by the way, to AJ last week. Guys that are willing to say, I, I want to fight. Right? I haven't boxed for a year. I know the crowds aren't the same. I know that financially, you know, it's not the same situation, but I want to fight. That's what I do. I'm a fighter. I'm an athlete. I want to chase my dreams. I want to achieve something. And Canelo Alvarez, like, although I'm 100% funky for my man, Callum Smith, I have to respect him because when I was negotiating with him, they don't care who they fight. They just want to fight the best. And because Callum Smith is the perceived number one and is the number one at 168, because he has the ring magazine belt, they want to fight him. And you have to really like Eddie Reynoso and, Callum, uh, and Canelo for that fact. Because there's many fighters in boxing, mainly, mainly advisors and trainers, that actually want to take an easier option. Canelo could have fought Yildirim. That's the fight that was ordered. Yeah. Every broadcaster, every promoter was chasing him down. He chose Callum. And I'm so pleased he did because Callum gets the opportunity of a lifetime to prove if he is a great. And, you know, you saw Joe Gallagher come up just off camera there. Which, you know, that was, that was nice to pumped. see. Oh, but everyone's pumped, you know. Listen, we've had jo uh, Callum from his professional debut, you know, and it's always... We, we used to get, you know, when, when we first started, the, the young fighters we signed, when they'd had about five fights, people would say, oh they don't know how to bring fighters through and you know to, to, I think we've earned the right to say we do know how to bring fighters through we do know how to provide them the opportunity and on Saturday you get to a position where you say it's over to you mate we've done our job you've won a world title I've delivered you the biggest fight in boxing go and show everyone how great you are so I can't wait you know this, this, is, this is the reason that I'm in boxing and even last week with Joshua Pudev where my fucking heart is racing through the roof Right, and I'm shitting myself, and my hairs are standing up, and my adrenaline's pumping. That's what it's all about, and we're going to get that on Saturday night. We certainly are. Uh, Talking about the fight, then, for me, when I've seen Bill McCallum at the hotel in this bubble down at the lobby, he looks so relaxed. Nothing's phasing him about this, which is good to see. So, but there is on the other flip, we've seen judges and people not getting the the right side of the scorecard when it comes to fighting a superstar and stuff like that. Does Cam need to go in there? Joe Gallas. Joe Gallagher's almost said that as well, that he needs a stoppage. Do you feel the same as Joe Gallagher in the terms that Cam might need to go out there and put a, on a clinical performance, drop Canelo, hurt him, and maybe even get the stoppage? I think that, you know, you always got to feel that when you're fighting a great like Canelo Alvarez in, not his backyard, but we know there's going to be 12,000 Mexican-Americans or people, you know, fight, fans coming through the border as well. You're up against it. But I do feel like we have a judging panel that will be honest and will be fair. 
But again, like you know, even twelve thousand Mexicans is going to sound like hundred thousand. So when a, when a jab slipped, there might be a roar, and sometimes that can work against you. Um, I think Canelo, I think Callum Smith has got to try and hurt Canelo Alvarez. If you don't hurt Canelo Alvarez, I think you've got limited chance in the fight. And Callum has the power and the ability to hurt him to head or body. What you said about him being calm, I've never seen a fighter, right, from the moment that we started talking about this fight to now, I've never seen a fighter so calm in, in a fight like this against a great like Canelo Alvarez. And when we were negotiating this fight, it was going on and on and it was backwards and forwards and, and then Canelo Alvarez posted and said, I'm announcing my fight at 10 o'clock tonight. We did our deal with Callum and we did the deal for the fight 10 minutes before that announcement. 15 minutes before that announcement, he goes, I'm just going to go out of bed. I'm just going to turn my phone up. I said, mate, we're going to lose the fight. Well, listen, like, you know my position. I'm relaxed. Yeah. And out here, and that's why I asked the question in the press conference as well, you know, is this environment, who is it suiting? Probably both fighters. Probably, do you know, I think from seeing AJ last week, I think he enjoyed it. Mm. Now, normally, it's absolute madness. And he was locked in his hotel room, you know, in the bubble, having a bit of fun and, you know, laugh about with his mates and doing his work in the bubble. I think this is the same for both guys. So we haven't got the madness of the Maharachi band and thousands of people at the MGM Grand and, you know, slobbering all over you. This is an opportunity to stay focused and say that Saturday I've got my chance to achieve greatness. Um, and again, it's hard to not be a fan of Canelo and Eddie Reynoso because especially when you see, like, obviously they've gone from... Golden Boy and that set up there too. It's just them two. Do you know what I mean? It's quite remarkable when you see a fighter of that size, and it's them. You know, when I was negotiating this fight, I was negotiating with Eddie Reynoso. That was it, and and they've been amazing. And if I weren't a Callum Smith man, you know, I would tell you even more, praise them even more. But they have been amazing in this fight and this build-up. No hassle, no aggravation, no ego. They just want to fight, and they want to fight the best, and that's what they live for. And you have to respect that. That's, that is refreshing to see. But going back to Cam, you, you say, you, I suppose you've got two hats on. I suppose you've got the DAZN hat for Canelo yeah, to sure. bring him back. You've got the Callum Smith, because you've known him for the last 10 years or so. But do, can you see Callum going in there and causing the, the biggest upset in, in the world so far? I, I don't see it. I asked the question in the press. You know, I don't see it as a massive upset. I see him as the underdog. But it's not. this isn't Hunnigan Curry. You know, this is just a British fighter who's the best 168 pounder in the world against a pound for pound great and if he wins don't get me wrong a massive win but not people i'm not going to be on the floor going i can't believe what's happened so you know for me he deserves this opportunity he's earned this opportunity and he's the champion you know when you talk about the two hats 100 percent. when canelo became a free agent me and every other promoter in the world wanted to try and do a deal with canelo Alvarez. i was a lucky one to do it but what was the pleasing thing about it was I've got our guy the opportunity of a lifetime. And when you become a world champion, it's a bit like Billy Joe Saunders now. He had this Canelo Alvarez fight. We were one day away from announcing. Uh, Demetrius Andre, you know, all these guys, when you get that championship, the next step is to try and achieve greatness. And it's so hard to try and get those opportunities in those fights when you're so good. So to deliver it for Callum is so pleasing. Now we've got to deliver it for Billy and we've got to deliver it for Demetrius and we, you know, all these other guys that we represent as well. So I don't see it as a shock. But can I do see him. Can Cam stop him? Yes. I mean, he's got a great chin. I mean, you saw him against Gennady Golovkin, one of the best punches, but it doesn't matter. You hit someone clean with Callum Smith's power and body. But it might not be a one-punch knockout. It might be a continuously wearing him down. But I think, you know, I think Canelo Alvarez has probably got to be looking to fight Callum the same way he boxed Rocky Fielding, which was to go in there, walk him down, try and put pressure on. It's very dangerous to do that against a big puncher like Callum Smith. But I promise you, you're going to get an amazing fight. Amazing fight. I don't think this fight goes past nine rounds. I don't. I think this fight ends inside nine rounds because I think Callum will be looking to take his chances. Is that for either fighter? Yes, yeah. because Callum will be looking to take his chances. And I believe he'll be looking to stand there at times and trade and hurt him. Because he ain't looking... I'll tell you one thing about Callum Smith's mindset. He has got no interest in coming here and seeing how he gets on, on points or, you know, trying to win a close decision. He knows this is it. You have to make it count in there. So when you get the opportunity, bite down on your gum shield and fucking let him fly. And he'll do that. He'll let his hands go in dangerous spots as well. But that's what you have to do. 
you know, and, and I think it's going to be an amazing fight. Again, I totally agree with everything you said. I'm glad you mentioned, mentioned Billy Joe there, Eddie, because I, I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be a rematch clause for either fighter. I, I'm, not, I'm not privy to the contract like you are, but Billy Joe Saunders is waiting there patiently. This is going to be some sort of headache for you if, when whoever wins on Saturday night, I'm pretty sure Billy's going to be on it, yeah, a little bit. But for you, what is the more organic fight for if Callum wins? Is it the Billy Joe Saunders fight if there's no rematch clause? Yeah, I mean, you know, there may be a rematch, but we'll see. I mean, it's not, it's not a case of just any fight deserves a rematch in, in this contractual situation, but you would naturally see that fight next. I think if Callum Swift wins, all of a sudden you have a, a unification fight with Billy. If Canelo Alvarez wins, he's going to want to pick up the other belts. The zone are probably going to want him to fight Triple G next if he wins tomorrow night. But at the same time, you know, that Triple G fight is, is a monstrous fight. I think that Canelo will want to say, OK, I want to be undisputed now at 168. And I think he'll want to fight Billy Joe Saunders. If Billy Joe Saunders um, uh, can't get that fight, I think he'll fight Demetrius Andre, who's here, by the he's way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can get a nice interview of him yeah, later. Well, so. I spoke to him at the shop. Yeah. I spoke to him at the shop then, told him to call um, I think Billy in, out. I think we're in good shape. I think we're in good shape. And I think uh, this is a good spot for everybody to be in. We've got to continue now making these big fights going into 2021. The fans will be happy. Away from this fight then, you mentioned Gennady Golovkin. Uh, I've seen him on the scales. F I want to swear, fuck's sake. Oh, no. I mean, he's been working really hard in this camp on his strength. And my God, I mean, that's the best I've ever seen him look on the scales. You know, an absolute wrecking ball. I think, I mean, Zeremet is super tough and this is a massive opportunity. European champion, he's, you know, this is his chance. Probably the worst time to fight, uh, Canella, uh, to fight Triple G. He looks like an absolute savage. So his 21st World Championship defence uh, tomorrow night, great guy great guy you know I'm, I'm so lucky that I'm getting a chance to work with these kind of fighters you know like like I said you know AJ last week Triple G tomorrow night Canelo Callum Smith you know we've got such an amazing roster and I love being around great I love being around elite athletes who are willing to put it all on the line and in boxing now we're really under pressure to keep great fights coming because we've seen over the last couple of months you know Roy Jones against mm. Tyson does great numbers and the YouTubers do great numbers well broadcasters want great numbers so if we don't keep making game. of course everything's a numbers game everything what you do is a numbers game you know what I mean you, you, you run a shop on the corner that's a numbers game you run a big supermarket chain it's a numbers game we deliver numbers for broadcasters that's the, they're our paymasters and they will say what are you going to deliver for us it's going to drive subscriptions or drive pay-per-view buys and if we make average fights, they won't deliver numbers or pay-per-view buys. If we make great fights, we know they deliver. So Errol Spence against Terence Crawford, Joshua against Fury, Chocolatito against Estrada, Devin Haney fight the winner of Ryan Garcia um, against Luke Campbell. The winner of this fight against Triple G, Billy Joe. You have to keep making those fights. Otherwise, boxing will be out. You know, we have a massive opportunity now around the world with this DAZN Global product. I mean, you should have seen the numbers last week of sign-ups in territories for the AJ fight. It's so fascinating to realise the world is such a big place and we're now going to go into all these crevices and cities and countries to continue the global growth of boxing. So we're in a really strong place, but it only works if the product's right. right? Whenever you're selling something, it's about consistency and it's about delivering a quality product. You know, I can talk, I've got a big mouth, but only the quality of the product will stand you the test of time so we just got to keep the pressure on and we've got to keep the pressure on fighters who we've seen step up during the pandemic trainers and advisors and managers and say no that's not good enough you know we want to see great fights two more then i'm glad you mentioned aj fury and i'm glad you mentioned the youtubers because that's going to be my next two questions aj fury discussions bob adam said he's going, going to speak to you on monday we're now in thursday um any discussions and if so how they went yeah they've gone good we had a couple of good chats um, we're drawing up some paperwork now to try and move forward to basically i think the main things is I've, I've mentioned it before is obviously the tv situation and where it's going to be okay so what we want to say is we have an agreement let's move forward now and go to market and see where this fight's going to take place and when we're targeting may everybody's on the same page of wanting to make this fight it's the only fight both guys are looking at in my opinion we'll see what happens on the wilder legal stuff with Fury if I'm being told the truth that has no legs good news um, if we don't fight Tyson Fury we'll fight Alexander Usyk but 
the Usyk fight is not even in the mind at the moment. It's just purely, purely focused on Tyson Fury. And I believe you're going to get it in 2021. I mentioned I'm going to talk about the YouTubers. Uh, can, we, can we blame you, Eddie, for all the Jake, what Jake Paul's been doing and stuff like that? They did do it before me, didn't they? But you could probably blame me quite a lot. You know, um, I think that... Okay, what were your thoughts on what he did with Conor McGregor, his call-out? I, I thought that was banging out of order. Because, look, I know they want to make some noise. But for me, by the way, Jake Paul don't give a fuck, all right? He don't care. I'm a YouTuber, Eddie. Yeah, are you? Yeah. But <laughs> you don't, for me, you don't disrespect someone's wife, right? Or mum. Or family. It's the one thing, it doesn't matter how tough you are. Not, well, you know, you can't stand in and say, yeah, if you said that about mum. But it does it, it's different, right? So to do that to someone like Connor... There's, there's calling people out, right? And there's trying to goad someone into taking a fight. And then there's doing something that, yeah. So listen, for me, Jake Paul's gonna do what Jake Paul wants to do. But, didn't like it, didn't like it. I thought the video was quite funny, except that those comments, you don't, you don't get personal like that, especially when there is no beef. It's fake beef, right? It's not like two fighters that come together and have a tear up on a stage and that beef is, like, you know, white Chisora, when they're talking about going around each other's houses and legitimately fighting outside the ring. This is fake beef to try and stir up interest in a fight, which is a big fight, by the way. Mm. But you don't go there, in my opinion. And if you do go there, when shit gets real, you better be ready. Do you know what I mean? Because this, this isn't a case of, all right, we'll see you in the ring. This could be a case of something very, very different. But... We'll see what happens. I mean, I like Jake Paul in, in a way because I think he's bringing a lot of eyeballs to the sport of boxing. And Logan Paul is extremely intelligent. KSI is another genius. But this is where I keep getting to about boxing. If we don't make the fights we need to, you're going to see more and more and more of this. I don't want to be involved in that. If that becomes the norm, I'd rather just go and sit on a beach for the rest of my life, to be honest with you. I want something that makes my blood pump, right? And that's Joshua Fury. That's even, like I said, Joshua Fury, Pulev last week, this, Triple G. That's what, I, I've been around boxing since seven, right? I fucking love this sport more than anything. I also understand the commercial side. So I don't mind a little bit sprinkled in. Tyson against Jones, weren't really a fan. Worked out all right, don't mind it. Logan Paul against someone or whatever, no problem. Logan Paul Mayweather's another story, but you know, okay. But we, as, fight, as the fight industry, have to up our game to make sure that our offering to fans, subscribers and broadcasters is good enough to make sure that there is longevity in the sport, as the sport, and not just entertainment of two geezers in a ring. Yeah. So that's how I feel about it. Well, this is one more, but just a quick, quick, quick thoughts on your fire and rider then. Yes. Um, so, obviously... We've got three shows this weekend. We've got Italy tonight, about to start probably, yeah. Yeah, no, it would have started. yeah, yeah it's just about to start. So, um, massive fight. You know, Gamal at Yefai, people won't really know the story, how unlucky this kid has been. He had one rup ruptured bicep, he had an operation, came back, he was about two weeks away from fighting, he ruptured the other one. He's been out for God knows how long. He's got to go to Italy tonight to try and win the European title. So I'm going to be tuning in and watching. Tomorrow night, Triple G and John Ryder. Ryder's actually in quite a tough fight against Mike Guy. Like, mm. These are the kind of fights where you don't want to be after five rounds going, fuck me, it's all square. You know, John Ryder, with this fight going on this weekend, will get his shot at the regular world title, probably against Chudinov next year. So he must win. Um, and let's just get through these and then we'll go and have a lovely Christmas and, you know, a little rest. And then, well, actually, tomorrow we hope to announce our first show of 2021 in January in the UK and actually hopefully the one after that got a big fight uh, to announce in the US uh, probably tomorrow as well in March and we can talk about them tomorrow so I think we're in a good spot but just get through show by show and then uh, have a nice rest well Eddie again thanks for this for TV it's absolutely joy to see you again I've missed you mate I've missed you to be honest but it's good to see you oh don't oh don't stop it <laughs> Eddie thank you so much mate thank you bro thank you This is something that comes along every now and then in generation, and it's special. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? 
Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt.